Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to see um, how to create a PowerShell uh, action, custom PowerShell action using Integration Hub and using Flow Designers. But right now, in market, Integration Hub is really in demand and we should know how to make use of it. So this custom action which we are going to create for PowerShell, same as custom PowerShell activity which we create in orchestration uh, activities or orchestration workflows. Um, I have a unique use case where we are going to see I'm going to create a PowerShell activity then I'm going to put that particular PowerShell activity into one of the subflows and that subflow we are going to trigger using uh, quick actions on an alert which is related to uh, event management. But this is just my use case but this particular action can be reused in the platform wherever it is required and you can trigger that particular subflow and action as needed from business rules or other scripts okay um so without wasting time i'm just going to jump on to the flow to, to the powerful activity here you can see um, how to create the action i think you guys already know click on new click on action once you click on it you need to give the name uh, to that action once you give and click on submit then you will see this page uh, you will not see powershell step but this is something which i have already created you will see only inputs and outputs then you need to define input here as i told you this is limited to my uh, use case i am going to supply the host name uh, as a ci uh, on alert we have a ci field that ci field will be substituted as a host name and here you can define multiple inputs as per your use case this input will be saved from the subflow which I have created. I will show you that as well. Once you do that, you need to click on plus sign and then you will see this particular screen where you see integrations. Now, if you have integration hub, you can see all these things and it requires subscription. So don't forget that you have integration of subscription also in place because the licensing is based upon the transactions for each uh, activity you see here. As soon as you select PowerShell, you will see this particular thing. This is the, this is it. Um, it has input and outputs. So if you see input here, it's credential value. Output is output, error message, and Windows error code. These things are then used in outputs here so that we can make use of these outputs in the subflow. I will show you that. Let's concentrate on this part. Here we have connection. There are two options. Use connection alliance, which allows you to create, make use of connection alliance. What exactly connection alliance needs is integration hub. And you see, you see it here, connection and credential alliance. Um, so you can make use of it. Also, uh, where it is, if I select the second type, define connection in line, then you can select the are the credentials which you want to use whatever credentials you have defined so i have defined something called as this is again a credential alliance which i have created and this credential alliance is tied to a respective credentials host as i told you we are going to make use of this host which is input here then port if it is required now this is interesting to select your mid server so which mid server should be used so mid application and capabilities i'm going to say orchestration and powershell so this determines which mid server should be used for this particular uh, step then the next important part is remoting type there are three types explicit remoting it means that it will establish a session with the remote server and execute that particular script on that particular remote server explicit remoting it is an advanced feature where um, you execute the script on the mid server, but if your script requires, uh, if your script requires, for example, let's say a few modules like Active Directory modules or, or some other modules, it will be imported. If you select this, we have to specify the module which should be imported on the mid server. The script will execute on the mid server and all the modules which are required for that script will be imported onto the mid server. And the last one is run on a mid server or have your script establish a remote session it is like enter a new ps session uh, if you are aware of the powershell uh, then you know what is enter uh, what is new ps session it will establish a session with your remote host and then execute the script on 
mid server so it will the script will be executed on the mid server but with the ps session established then the next thing here is mid server script file so and i don't know if you guys are aware of it but this is mid server script files you can define the script here if if it's a generic script uh, script you can define the script here and then the flows can make use of it you have to select the script here but if you have a custom script then i will select inline script and then i can give the script whatever i want to run here and then i can define the input variables required to that script so if your script needs some dynamic variables from your sub you can define the input variables here so you can say okay environment for example env you can fetch the value for example let's say my hostname contains environment okay so this was just an example uh, i'm going to create this because i have already created something you can see i am just going to get the, all the processes on that particular host which we are going to pass using the subflow and we are going to update the alert on which that particular host is then the last one is outputs so i have created this output variables you can see this and this is same because this is something which i created and this comes out of the box with the powershell step okay i am just mapping this output with this output error message with error message windows error code with error code so that i can make use of these three variables in my subflow so we know if there is any error what is error we can update that error on alert if there is any error code we can update that error code on the alert if there is a, uh, what is the output all the processes will be in the output and we will update that output on the alert right so if i if you see this is how you actually maps so just drag and drop drag and drop okay let's go to i'm just going to make sure that i saved it and i publish it okay once that is done we are going to go to this subflow here you can see the subflow right uh, here is our custom action and that action we are passing the host name as we have only one input parameter defined and if you see the output of first step this is one this is the output so i get output error message error code which i have defined here in the outputs right um, so this is the subflow which we are going to trigger from the alert okay but before that i want to show you how you can test the action independently you can test it same like orchestration custom power selectivity you can also test this click on test just put the host name and run once i do that it is running you can see load and you can see the output now there is no error so i have an output variable and this is the detail of all the processor running on that particular machine also in step section you can see which mid server was selected what was the credential used and what was the output so this is how you independently test it now just to test it on the alert what i have done is i have created a simple uh, simple alert management rule okay and that alert management rule is like this this is the simple alert management tool where if the configuration item is not empty and if it is the configuration item we are going to trigger it manually and how to trigger it manually you can also trigger it automatically but we are going to trigger it manually and when i say manually you need to go to quick responses click on it and then you see this get running processes on server this is nothing but a name of our subflow i will again show you this one so let's see how it runs once i click on this it will take me to the new screen where i can see the flow execution and i will just refresh this let's see it takes time okay now you can see it is in progress i am going to reload and now i can see that the output was not empty output has had some values and that's the reason the incident was updated also if i click on here i can see the output is fetched properly now let's go back to the alert i'm going to close this i'm going to update the work node so you can see the time i have just updated it and all the details are here all the process details are here okay whatever we fetch so this helps the operator basically 
if a particular operator is working on the alert, he can dynamically face the services, processes running on that particular machine or the configuration item. And, um, and it, will, it will ideally help uh, everyone so that uh, you can restart it. You can automate it basically. If you want to extend the size, if you want to extend the size of the storage server or if you want to extend the RAM of a server, then you can you can make use of PowerShell activity and you can just trigger the PowerShell command from here. You can also trigger SSH, STFP, REST messages, everything. I am going to make more videos about REST, SSH and other things also. So this is a significance of uh, making your own custom PowerShell action which can be reused in different different flows in your organization. If you have any queries, just let me know comment in my video or, or also I have created an article on ServiceNow community for this where I have explained step by step procedure to create this. You can follow that article. I also have my YouTube channel where you can see all the videos which I have created. Um, so you can also comment on that and please keep following, keep subscribing and keep suggesting new use cases so that I will be able to create more videos, more content and share it with you. So thank you so much for watching this and see you soon in my next week. Thank you.